Okay guys, in this video we're going to solve some exponential and logarithmic equations and this is called a walkthrough. So as I do these here in the video, I want you to have a sheet of paper, something to write with, a pencil, and also a calculator. Let's go ahead and solve this first problem, e to the x equals 3. So what we do is we have the number e, and in case we haven't talked about e yet, e is an irrational number. It is approximately equal to 2.718281828. It's called the Euler number, E-U-L-E-R. Looks like Euler, but actually that's pronounced Euler. So it's called the Euler number. And it's an irrational number. One of its cousins is pi. Uh, another irrational number would be the square root of three. So it's just a number. So when we have a logarithm with a base of e, we use that so frequently, we give it its own special kind of logarithm. We say ln, which stands for the natural logarithm. So if you ever see ln of x, what you're dealing with is log base e. So what I'm going to do to solve this equation is I'm going to take the natural logarithm of both sides. So I have the natural logarithm of e to the x equals the natural logarithm of 3. And now I'm going to use the power property. And the power property says that the x can come down to the front of the natural logarithm. And so now I have x times the natural logarithm of e equals the natural logarithm of 3. Now remember, what does it mean to have ln of e? Well, that's the log base e of e. So what power do you have to raise the number e to to get the number e 1? And so by definition, and this is worth memorizing, the natural logarithm of e is always 1. So this is x times 1, which is x. And so the exact answer to this problem is x equals natural logarithm of 3. Let's go ahead and find an approximation with our calculator. Look at your calculator, and you should, if it's a scientific calculator, there should be an LN button on the calculator. 10, 100, 1,000, 10 thousands. So for this problem, I'm going to go to the 10 thousands place. When we type in L and E, we get approximately, and I'd like you to do this on your calculator, 1.0986. And that is the solution to the problem. So if I take E and raise it to the 1.0986, I'm going to get a number very close to the number 3 probably 2.999 something or 3.00001, but that's the solution to the problem. All right, let's go ahead and solve this exponential equation. Sometimes one number can be written as the power of another number, and that's the case we have here. 64 is the same thing as 8 squared. So I replace the 64 with 8 squared. And I have 8 to the x power equals 8 squared raised to the 2x plus 3. Now I distribute the 2 into the x plus 3. And so this becomes 8 to the 2x plus 6. And whenever you have an exponential equation where the bases on both sides match perfectly like we do in this case, we are allowed to drop the base. And so we can say that x equals 2x plus 6. Subtract 2x to the other side, negative x equals 6, and divide both sides by negative 1. So the solution is x equals negative 6. So if I plug this solution back in, I have 8 to the negative 6 
equals 64 to the negative 6 plus 3. And that's equal to 64 to the negative 3. So take your calculator. Take 8, raise it to the negative 6 power, hit enter. And then take 64, raise it to the negative 3 power, and hit enter. You should get exactly the same thing. So x equals negative 6 is the solution. Let's solve log base 5 of x equals 3. So let's remember what a logarithm is. A logarithm is a power. So if I convert this into exponential form, this is the same thing as saying 5 to the third power equals x. Well, what is 5 to the third power? 125. And so now I have the solution to the problem, x equals 125. Let's check this. Log base 5 of 125 equals 3. But 125 is 5 to the third power. And so that's logarithm base 5 of 5 to the third power equals 3. The power property says I can bring down the 3. So this is 3 times the logarithm <coughs> base 5 of 5. And by definition, the logarithm base 5 of 5 is 1. So this is 3 times 1. But that's 3. And so that's the answer. Logarithm base 3 of x plus logarithm base 3 of 5 equals 3. Here I'm going to use the power property. Or let me say that correctly, not the power property. I'm going to use the product property. So if I have the logarithm base 3 of x plus the logarithm base 3 of 5, that is the same thing as the logarithm base 3 of 5 times x. So you multiply the 5 and the x. And that's equal to 3. Now, let's remember what this means. Base 3 to the third power equals 5x. So what I just did is I converted from logarithmic form into exponential form. 3 to the third power is the number 27. So 27 equals 5x divide both sides by 5 and I get 27 or 27 fifths and 5 goes into 7 5 goes into 27 5.4 times and so x equals 5.4 now let's check our answer so the logarithm base 3 of 5.4 plus the logarithm base 3 of 5 equals 3. Again, let's use the product property. So 5.4 times 5 is equal to 27. So this is the log base 3 of 27, and that equals 3. But 27 is 3 to the third power, and so this is logarithm base 3 of 3 to the third power. Then the power property says I can bring down the 3. So this is 3 times log base 3 of 3 equals 3. And what is log base 3 of 3? It's 1. So this is 3 times 1 equals 3. We've got our answer. Number 5, e, that's the Euler number, to the 3x power equals 8. Now, we're going to use a logarithm to solve this, and we can use any logarithm we want. So I could write common log, that's log base 10, of e to the 3x equals common log of 8. 
and I'm not wrong to do that. But I'm going to use the natural log because it's actually going to make the problem or the solution a little bit easier to obtain. So because I have e to the 3x, let's take the natural logarithm of both sides. Natural logarithm of e to the 3x equals natural logarithm of 8. Power property. What can I bring down? I can bring down the 3x. And so now I have 3x times natural log e equals natural logarithm of 8. What is the natural logarithm of e? It's the number 1. So this is 3x times the number 1, which is 3x. So 3x equals the natural logarithm of 8. And now I divide both sides by 3. So x equals 1 third times the natural logarithm of 8. That's the exact answer. Now I'm going to find the approximate answer. And I'm going to find the approximate answer. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I've chosen to do this to six decimal places. So I would like you to try and type this in the calculator. Make sure you're understanding how to get the same answer I'm getting. 0 0.693147. And there's the answer. Number six, five to the x plus two equals seven raised to the x minus one. Now five is not a power of seven and seven is not a power of five. We're gonna to have to use a logarithm to solve this. And we can use any logarithm we want. I'm gonna use the common logarithm, logarithm base, five, uh, base 10. Could we use natural log? Yes. And there's nothing wrong with using natural log. We're gonna use common log. So make sure you're doing these problems with me. So I take the common logarithm of both sides. Now, I'm gonna use the power property. And I want you to notice that we're powering down binomials. So whenever you power down a binomial, use parentheses. X plus two times common log five equals x minus one times common log seven. Now common log five is just a number. 10 to what power gives me five? That's what common log five is. So we're gonna distribute common log five just like we would any other number. And we're gonna distribute common log seven just like we would any other number. So this becomes x times common log five plus two times common log five. That's distributing from the left. Now I distribute on the right hand side. This is x common log seven minus one common log seven. And I really don't need the one, I could just say minus common log seven, but that's okay. Well, I'm gonna use the power property here. So the two is in front of the log five, I'm gonna power the two up. So that becomes common log of five squared, and five squared is 25, so this is common log of 25. So now I have x, times the logarithm of five plus the logarithm of 25 equals x times the logarithm of seven minus the logarithm of seven. Now, just like any equation, we're gonna get x 
my x terms on one side and all my non x terms on the other side. So what I'm going to do is I am going to subtract x log 7 from both sides. And I'm going to subtract common log 25 from both sides. Now let me show you what this is going to look like. After subtracting everything I need, we get x times the logarithm of 5 minus x times the logarithm of 7. That's now on the left. On the right, <clears throat> we have negative log 7 minus log 25. Look at the left-hand side. What is my greatest common factor? It's x. So I factor out the x, and this becomes x times common log 5 minus common log 7. And what's my greatest common factor on the right? It's negative 1. So this becomes negative 1 times common log 7 plus common log 25. Now, logarithm 5 minus logarithm 7. I'm going to use my quotient property. And so this becomes x times the logarithm of 5 divided by 7. That's the quotient property. And on the other side, I'm going to use the product property. It's a plus there. So 7 times 25 is equal to, let me find it, 175. So this is negative logarithm of 175. And now all I have to do is divide both sides by the logarithm of 5 sevenths. And I've got my answer. So negative common log of 175 divided by logarithm of 5 sevenths. And that, my friend, is the exact answer. I'm going to find the approximate now. I'd like you to type in your calculator. Make sure you get the same thing. I'm going to go to four decimal places. So the answer here is 15.3498. And so that is the answer that solves the problem. We used our properties quite a bit. And so whenever you have an exponential equation where one power or one base cannot be written in terms of the other base, I'm going to put a little star here to kind of signify, that's when we're going to have to use our properties quite a bit. Okay, then we take a shift. Now we're into investment problems. P is called a principle principle in finances is how much you invest. A is the amount. That's how much money you have after T years. T could be days, but in the problems we're doing today, T is just years. And this formula is called the compound interest formula. Now for questions 7, 8, 9, 10, we are assuming that we're compounding annually, which means that one year passes and we don't get any interest until one year is completed. So now the question is simply this, how much time is it going to take for $1,000 invested at 3% to turn into $5,000? So we set up the equation. We replace A with 5,000 
and we replace P with 1,000. 1 plus 3% is 1 plus 0.03 raised to the T. And so now I have 5,000 equals 1,000 times 1 1.03 to the T. We're gonna divide both sides now by the principal. So 5,000 divided by 1,000 and 1,000 divided by 1,000. So now we have an exponential equation. When does five equal 1.03 raised to the T? And I'm gonna use a logarithm to solve this. Remember, you can use any logarithm you want. I'm gonna do the one that comes most naturally, hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I'm gonna use the natural logarithm of both sides. So ln of five equals ln of 1.03 to the t. And now it's time to use the power property. So I bring down the t. So ln of five equals t times ln of 1.03. Now we divide both sides by the natural logarithm of 1.03. So t, the exact value, is t is the natural logarithm of five divided by the natural logarithm of 1.03. What does this turn into? So I'm gonna to go to the hundredths place, two decimal places. And so that's 54.45. So 54 years and how many months? Well, how many months in a year? 12. So what you do is you take the decimal, 0 0.45, and you multiply that by 12, and then you're gonna get five months. And a little bit more, but I only wanna go to the month. So if I have a decimal after that, I just discard it. So it's gonna take 54 years and five months for $1,000 to transform into $3,000 invested at 3%. Let's look at this problem. How long is it gonna take for $10,000 to turn into $100,000 invested at 5%? Replace A with 100,000. Replace P with 10,000. Replace R with 0.05. And so 100,000 equals 10,000 times 1.05 to the T. Now we divide both sides by 10,000. And so we get 10 equals 1.05 to the T. Can I use natural logarithm of both sides? Yes, but common log is probably better. Do you know why? Because common log is base 10 and I have a 10 right here. So instead of the natural logarithm, which there wouldn't be anything wrong with using that, I'm gonna use the common logarithm. Now by definition, the common logarithm of 10 is one. I power down the T. And now I divide both sides by the common logarithm of 1.05. All right, let's type that in our calculators. To the hundredth place, you're gonna get 47.19. So that's 47 years. Let's figure out how many months. Take the decimal part, 0 0.19, multiply by 12, and you're gonna get two point something. 
So we're going to say 47 years and two months. And then if you have a decimal after that, just discard the decimal. How long is it going to take for $555 to turn into $12,500 at 8% interest? Replace the A with 12,500. Replace the P with 555. Replace the R with 0 0.08. And so now 12,500 equals 555, 1.08 to the T. Let's divide both sides by 555. So 12,500 divided by 555 equals, this is gonna turn out to be a repeating decimal here. 22.522 repeating. And so that's 1.08 to the T. Now I don't have 10 as a power of anything here. So what is the most natural thing to use? The natural logarithm. So we take the natural logarithm of 22 point five two two equals the natural logarithm of one point zero eight to the t. Now we use the power property. So we have natural logarithm of twenty two point five two two equals t times the natural logarithm of one point zero eight. And we divide both sides by the natural logarithm of one point zero eight forgot that that's repeated. So natural logarithm of 22.522 repeating divided by the natural logarithm of 1.08. And let's go again to the nearest hundredth. That's 40.47, which is 40 years. Now take the decimal, 0 0.47, multiply by 12, and then whatever decimal you get, discard it. And so that is equal to five months. This is the last problem. How many years is it gonna take for $1 to turn into a million dollars at 10%? I'm going to let you do this one on your own. All right. God bless you, wherever you are today.